Welcome to Small Business Hacks! In this video, I'm going to explain to you the 5 principles of excellence used by business leaders in sectors like astronomy, hospitality and consulting. All of them drink from the same source, a source that you'll discover in the next few minutes. But in my case, it took me longer to learn it. When I decided to open my first business in the hospitality area, I had no experience at all. My career until then was in airline headquarters, in the pricing area. We struggled at the beginning. Reviews from side-fied customers punished our business. In this sector, image and reputation are almost everything, so this was putting our own existence at risk. Looking for solutions, I immersed myself in the written wisdom from renowned service entrepreneurs. And that's when I discovered a straightforward method. It used five great principles, which I found in the masterpiece of Micah Solomon, exceptional service, exceptional profit. They are principles valid for nearly all service industries, including gastronomy, consulting, events and conferences, marketing agencies, healthcare, or tourism and hospitality. What all these sectors have in common? In all of them, the object of sale is not tangible. In a car dealership or fashion store, you can touch the products. But in the case of a consulting firm, a hotel, or an event producer, you are selling experiences. When someone buys a car, it takes months, maybe years, to assess the product quality. But when a client buys a service, the quality is assessed in the instant. Often, there is no second chance. You must hit in the first shot, and the five principles I will tell you can help you to ensure that. Principle 1. The first step of service is a warm and sincere greeting. If your product is a service, you are selling it at the moment the client enters in contact with you. The sale starts before any financial transaction. It starts even before you know that the customer is a customer. In my business, like in most touristic accommodations, there is a front desk receptionist who welcomes and bids farewell to guests and answers the phone. Their actions are among the biggest influences on our reputation. One of my first changes was to establish the principle that the phone should never ring more than three times before someone answers. Any potential guest would think twice about reserving a room in a place that does not pick the phone. It gives an image of indifference and negligence two characteristics that no service provider wants to associate with. The way you greet potential customers will communicate the level of service your company provides. If you have a laid-back marketing agency and answers the phone with a serial dark tone, you are sending the wrong signals to your potential customer. Maybe answer the phone with a more energetic salutation. Or put a smile on your face, it makes your voice sound better. The first words on the phone, reception, or even by email should always sign on what the customer can expect from you. An insurance agency must be sober and transmit confidence. A backpacker hostel on the other side will adopt an easygoing, informal posture. Principle 2. The subtle verbal and non-verbal code. A great lesson that any service business should learn with luxury hotels is to read the message the customer is delivering. Let's suppose you arrive at one of the Hits Carton hotels in Thailand on a hot afternoon. A sun is strong enough to make anyone dehydrated. The bellman or any other first contact employee will offer you a beverage in your first minutes inside. Why Hits is so different? There, employees, or as they call it, ladies and gentlemen, have their attention dedicated to subtle signals. Customers from this luxury hotel often do not need to vocalize their needs. I apply this principle to my hostel by training our staff to watch the customer during check-in. If the guest is an elderly couple with problems climbing stairs, we offer a room on the ground floor. These and other examples help us to improve our reputation, although we still have a long road to reach excellency. Plus, remember that anticipatory service results in customer loyalty. When you start to pay attention to your customer's needs and anticipate it, magic happens. The perception they have about your business will have a boost. It's a huge benefit for a cost that can be as low as a glass of water. Principle 3. Adjust to the pace of the customer. 
This is similar to one of the points from principle 1. Here, however, we are talking about the entire service delivery, not only the first contact. During the case, managers adopted Taylorism and industrial concepts to service. That led to a wave of standardization and destroyed flexibility. Service processes became too rigid and inflexible, lacking adaptation to customer needs. Already in the 90s, CEOs started to demonstrate concern with excessive standardization. In the service industry, a change started. A study of customer behavior developed, and, with it, service customization. At my business, we adopted this principle by considering our two largest customer segments, international tourists and local travelers. We developed two different websites with different sets of information and different languages. A simple translation of what we offer to different languages was not enough. International tourists have completely different needs from local guests, so we needed to address them correctly in our communication. It worked! By the way, please allow me a small digression. If you're enjoying this video, please give us a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button for our next videos, and activate the notifications. Now back to our subject. Principles 4 and 5. The bubble is the sanctuary of the guest, so know when to close or open it. The concept of personal space, together with the limits in what you can or cannot talk about, varies from country to country. In an era when people from different cultures and backgrounds do business with each other, this represents a tremendous barrier. So more than ever, service providers should understand the nuances of personal space. Few simple rules will help to not bust the customer bubble and cause discomfort, or worse, irritation. First, if the time is wrong to disturb the customer, don't. Your procedures and timing need to be based on the customer's convenience, not yours. Two, if during an informal pre-sale conversation your prospect customer shows any hesitation with a certain subject, avoid it. For example, while for Indians a conversation about salaries is okay, Italians keep this kind of information confidential. This is just one example of many. Know the cultural nuances of your customers. 3. While Americans tend to be very straightforward during business meetings, some Asian cultures prefer a long and unrelated chat before going to the main topic, so they know each other better and assess intentions. If you go too slow or too fast with your clients, you may hit the wall. In the case you have international guests, as my business has, I recommend applying the Pareto principle. It will help you to select in which cultural aspects you must specialize. This principle states that for most situations, 20 or less of the parts will be responsible for 80% of the results. In my example, while we serve more than 50 nationalities, only 6 countries are responsible for 90% of our income. They are Poland, the UK, Russia, Belarus, the US and Ukraine. Our staff knows very well the cultural differences between each of them. The customer opens the personal bubble for you when he shows interest in doing business with your company. This is the greeting phase. In the same way, when business is concluded, either with a negative outcome or with a positive delivery, the bubble is closing. It's important here that the service providers know when it's closing. If the bubble is closing, provide a personal farewell and an invitation for return. Good wishes work well too. Here we always wish all our guests a good trip. If your business is a plastic surgery clinic, wish our customers success with their new looks. If it's a branding agency, wish our customers success with their new visual identity. And there it goes. With kind closures, chances increase that the Mr. Client will remember our agency for the next campaign. A sincere greeting, a proper reading of subtle signals, the adjustment to the customer pace, the knowledge of the customer bubble, and the kind farewell summarize how these five principles can bring luxury levels of satisfaction to your business, no matter what service you provide. And thanks for watching!